All right, hacksters. I thought I was familiar with all the cool terms for hardware add-ons like capes, shields, hats, and bonnets, and more. Well, turns out there's another one I didn't know about, and that's the shim, short for shove hardware in the middle. Uh, and so the one that I have in here, here in the office today, is the Raspberry Pi fan shim from Pi Maroni. And what you're shoving in the middle is this cooling fan to keep your Raspberry Pi, the 4 in this case, from overheating. I've actually lost a Raspberry Pi 4 before to overheating, and so I figured this was necessary if I was going to jump into machine learning and things again. So let's get this open. The bold claim on the website is that this takes less than two minutes to install. Ooh, look at that. So it looks like the fan and the shim part are separate. This is a little tiny little half-height PCB with a little JST connector, presumably for the fan, and it's a friction fit on the pins. You want to make sure that you attach it to the exact correct pins, but it should just sort of sit on there. There's also a couple of bolts that you can use to attach. Here are said bolts. Little nylon guys. And the fan itself. They tell you very clearly to never press down on the fan or apply pressure to it while installing it or uninstalling because it may break. So let's take a quick look at the website and make sure that I'm going to put this on correctly. Apparently it makes your Pi faster, look at that. But it absolutely does make a difference in terms of cooling. It's also compatible with their new Pibo Coupe case, which looks very cute. And it goes up to 4200 RPM. Plus they say that it's whisper quiet, which is very important for me because I want to do some audio integrations, including playing music from this thing, and if it's constantly going like like my computer right now, <laughs> then it won't be very nice. They have an in-depth getting started guide. So I'm going to start following this. We've got to put the little bolts in from the bottom of the shim. It's very stylish too. Put a couple of the nuts on. Okay, and now we put the fan on with the side with the writing on facing up. And the cable at approximately 7 o'clock, push it onto the bolts and then secure with the other nuts. So this way, writing up, cable here, 7 o'clock, and apply our other nuts. Ah, and they've even given us an extra nut just in case. That is a necessary precaution for me. This one is less easy and fun to get on. I would even say it's a little bit obnoxious. There we go. And the other one. Cool. All right, now to plug it into the shim, we want to make sure that the red wire is on the right. It's also pretty easy to tell because these things are polar. These connectors have a little outcropping on one side that matches the one on the connector. Now that's never coming out without some serious fingernail action. All right, so next we want to make sure that our Pi is shut down and powered off. Since it's not plugged in, I'm going to assume that's the case and very carefully match up our pins. And that's going to be the very top left. Assuming that the writing is this way up and the pins are on the top left, just go all the way to the extreme on there. It's interesting how this top row of pins have some wiggle room, some give in them, and the bottom ones do not. Clearly meticulous attention to design. And it sits right down on there with a tiny little bit of space between our main processor and the fan. Beautiful. Beyond this point, there's a bit of software tweaking that you have to do in order to get your Pi to work with the fan shim software. I won't do that right now. However, even if you do just plug in the shim, it'll already start spinning on its own. If the fates allow, you will soon see it in action in an actual project. Time to run some AI models. Hack on.